And Jesus asks, what do you want me to do for you? We could hardly give a better answer than Bartimaeus the blind man. Lord, I want to see. He wanted to see not only with his eyes, but with his heart. The same of all of us, we should want to see with our heart. There's a story told often that when we look at a sunset, what do we see? Do we see colors? Do we see the red and yellow of the sunset? Or do we say and see, God, thank you for this beauty? Radically different is our visions of faith. With eyes filled with beauty, we can see faith, we can see truth and goodness. We see how God loves and cares for the least of us. We see God's vision of our faith, that he loves us unconditionally without judgment. We see the beauty and goodness in ourselves and in others. We see each person as unique, gifted, and talented. And besides all that, God loves us unconditionally. Bartimaeus could have sat silent as Jesus passed, but he had the courage to ask. Two, we need to have the courage to ask. Open our eyes, God. Let us see you. Let us see you and heal us. As many of you know, I have the privilege every week of going into your school here at St. Joseph. This past couple weeks, I had the pleasure of going in the second and third grades. It was there that we talked about, first in the morning, we do the Pledge of Allegiance. And secondly, the rosary is said over the morning announcements. What a wonderful gift that these children are receiving to learn the rosary at such a young age. The one classroom I'm in, the rosary said rather fast, and for second graders, that's a little too fast. So the teacher, after that morning announcement, has the class gather in a circle up in front. And she has a rosary in her classroom about the size of Mary's rosary up here, if not a little bit bigger. And she has them stand in a circle, and each one of them is holding onto that rosary. She picks three numbers out of a hat, and those three students come up and stand in the middle. And as the rosary is recited, each decade is recited, they move their little hands along the rosary, feeling that rosary and the message that God has given to each one of them. I have to tell you, it's a gift for me to be part of saying that in the morning with these precious kids these precious students that desire to see faith and to see it through their hearts. This past week when I was in there in the second grade, um, being second graders, when deacon comes, they don't stay in their chairs. Um, they're rather noisy and boisterous if they stay in their chairs and their desks and clatter and clang. So the teacher, actually all the teachers in their bright wisdom have them sit on this rug. There's a rug in every classroom. And they sit with their legs crossed and, and we talk about things. I don't go in with a syllabus to lecture them. We talk about what they want to know about faith. At the end, I always close with a prayer and the prayer is a very simple prayer. It's a prayer for the students. It's a prayer for the families of the students. It's a prayer for the school. It's a prayer for parents both that they may see God and travel faithfully with God to school, at school, back from school, and afterwards. I always tell them at the end, when you see me in the church, I'll be in plain clothes. I won't be in vestments. I won't have a collar on. But come and say hello if you feel called to do that 
And also ask me, in particular, if you have somebody you need me to pray for. Because as priests and deacons, as well as people of faith, that's what we're asked to do, pray. This particular day, two of the students raised their hands. The one little boy said, Deacon, I have someone I want you to pray for. So I went and knelt before him, and he told me in his little voice, I need you to pray for my cousin. She has juvenile diabetes. The second child, the little girl, I went over to her, knelt before her, and she looked at me and she said, Deacon, my cousin is eight and is having bone marrow transplant soon. Could you pray for her? Now, I want to tell you, first and foremost, what a blessing for me to have these little kids in the second grade pour out their innermost self to me. But better yet, they shared their faith and their prayer life with all the other little bodies that are there. All the other little kids heard them say, this is my faith. God, open my eyes, open my heart, so that I may share this faith with everybody else. There's a story that um, is told about a man that was blind from birth. And through the miracle of our sciences, our modern miracles, he went under surgery and was able to see for the first time in his entire life. He was blind from birth. When he came out of the hospital and was home, of course, all the media wanted to gather around and find out, what's it like to see after all these years? And they expected from him the answer, oh, I'm glad to see my grandchild, I'm glad to see the sun, I'm glad to see the sunrise and the sunset, the clock telling me what time it is. But instead, he answered them from his heart. He said, you know, when I was blind in the fall, I always heard from people of all the beautiful colors on the trees, the reds, the yellows, the oranges. And he said, I imagine those leaves fell down and just kind of formed a blanket. And then I heard about people raking them, and I could smell people burning them in their backyard. He said, but I want to tell you, he said, what I enjoy most in the fall is watching those leaves come down. They come down from the tree, and they twist, and they turn, and the wind determines where they're going to land. And isn't that like us? We twist and we turn in the, in the wind. We do not know where we're going to land. God knows. We try too hard sometimes to fall where we want to fall. This is how our faith is. We twist and we turn, but yet if we turn towards God, we know where we're going to land. Faith can open our eyes, it can open, unstop our ears, it can even free us from death. This is our faith. I am truly blessed as a deacon when I was ordained to be assigned here to St. Joseph Parish. Blessed for more than one reason, at our ordination retreat, Father Al Krupp, who was my spiritual advisor, told me, you know, you're going to be going to St. Joseph, and you don't know anybody there. But God has placed on all these people's hearts, all your hearts, that you know I'm here and that you know how to approach me in time of need. You are truly blessed, and I am truly blessed as well at this Priesthood Sunday to have three absolutely wonderful priests to serve us to our faith, and Father Ron, and Father Tom, and Father Becker. We are all truly blessed, because I know they will never leave us in the wind. 
They know how to direct our faith and where a safe place is to fall in the arms of Jesus. There's a Broadway play called Godspell came out quite a few years ago. In it, it's an absolutely wonderful song. It simply goes day by day, dear Lord, of these three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. May God grant us the peace to seek sight and the courage to be blind no more.